Welcome students. Our today's topic is Bolzano-Westros theorem. Bolzano-Westros theorem states that let A be an infinite bounded set of real numbers, then A contains at least one accumulation point. Means every infinite and bounded set has at least one a limit point or accumulation point. Before starting the proof of this theorem, if you are new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my YouTube channel first. Now, first we should know that what is the accumulation point or a limit point. For a set A, a point P is the limit point of set A if every neighborhood of point P contains a point of A other than this point P, that is A intersection neighborhood of P minus P is non-empty for all neighborhoods of point P. If for all neighborhoods of point P this condition is satisfied then we say that point P is the limit point of A. Now we try to prove this theorem, suppose we have a non-empty set A and as A is bounded set, A is infinite and bounded set which implies A1 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b1 for all x belongs to A. As A is bounded which implies A1 is lower bound of this set and B1 is the upper bound of set A. So, every element of set A is less than or equal to B1 and greater than or equal to A1. The reason is A is bounded set. From here we can write that which implies a is a subset of close interval A1, B1 as every element of A is present in this close interval A1, B1. Let this close interval A1, B1 is equal to I1. Remember this close interval A1, B1 contains infinite points of A. The reason is a is infinite and A is contained in this set which implies this close interval contains infinitely many points of set A. Now we bisect this interval I1 at the midpoint which is A1 plus B1 by 2 and we get a new interval, two intervals that is a1, A1 plus B1 upon 2 and the second interval is A1 plus B1 upon 2 B1. This is our equation number 1. These two intervals are obtained by bisecting this interval I1 into two sub intervals. Remember, I1 contains infinite points of A which implies at least one of the interval must contain infinite points of set A. The reason is if both set contains finite points of A then set A is finite but we know that A is an infinite bounded set. So, at least one of this interval must contain infinitely many points of set A. Say that particular interval is a to B to. A to B to is one of the interval in equation number 1 that contains infinite points of set A. Say A to B to is the interval, one of the interval in equation 1 which contains infinite points of set A. Let 
a2 is equal to a2 b2 this closed interval is equal to i2 and i2 contains infinitely many points of set a now again we bisect this set into two sub intervals and we get two intervals a2 a2 plus b2 upon 2 and the second interval a2 plus b2 upon 2 comma b2 this interval is obtained by bisecting i2 at its midpoint this is our equation number 2 then again by repeating the above process at least one of the interval must contains infinite points of set a the reason is i2 contains infinite points of set a say one of the intervals that contains infinite points of set a is the interval i3 and which is equal to a3 b3 a3 b3 is one of these two intervals which contains infinite points of set a and this is equal to i3 now by continuing this process we get a sequence of nested closed interval first we had an interval i1 we bisect into two intervals and we obtained I, interval i2 i2 is contained in i1 and similarly i3 is contained in i2 up to so on by continuing this process we get a sequence of nested closed intervals remember each of these intervals contains infinite points of set a this is our equation number 3 each of these interval contains infinite points of set a also remember that limit n approaches to n infinity i n mod that is length of nth interval when n approaches to n infinity is equal to 0 that is we have an interval a1 b1 we bisect this interval into two sub interval and got the second interval i2 by bisecting i2 we get another interval i3 by continuing this process we get a sequence of nested closed intervals such that the length of these intervals are decreasing that is i2 the length of i2 is less than length of i1 by continuing this process the length of nth interval when n approaches to infinity is equal to 0 so by continuing this process the length of the interval when n approaches to infinity becomes 0 and n above these intervals there is one point which is common to all these intervals when n approaches to infinity the length of nth intervals shrinks uh, to a point and we are left with a point p now our target is to prove this point as a limit point of our set now to prove the point p as limit point we have to show that every neighborhood of this point contains infinite points of set A. Now we construct a neighborhood of this point. Let this point P belongs to A and not B and not B any open interval. this is an interval a and not b and not this point p is this point p is included in this interval 
Now, from here, as this open interval contains the point P, now we can construct an interval I n naught. Interval I n naught, whose length is this is our interval I n naught. Now, as we know that this point P is included in all the above intervals I1, I2 up to so on I n. So, there must contains an interval I n naught which is contained in this open interval A n naught, B n naught and this point P is contained in both I interval I n naught and open interval A n naught, B n naught. So, if we choose the length of I n naught less than minimum of these two distance, distance of point P and B n naught and distance of point P and A n naught that is minimum of B n naught minus P and P minus A n naught. Then this interval is this interval I n naught is included in this interval open interval A n naught B n naught. In other words, this nested interval is subset of open interval A n naught B n naught. If the magnitude of or length of this interval is less than minimum of these two distance clearly shown in the figure, this interval is contained in open uh, this nested interval is closed uh, is contained in open interval A and not B and not. Now, remember each interval I1, I2 up to so on I and contains infinite points of set A which implies this interval must contains this is one of the above interval and this should also contain infinite points of set A. So, if this interval contains infinite point of set A then this interval is subset of this open interval that is I n naught interval is subset of open interval A n naught B n naught clearly shown in figure. So, if uh, as this interval contains infinite points of set A which implies this open set must contains infinite points of A. So, we can write that A intersection a n naught b n naught is equal to n finite set n finite set in other words a this contains infinite points of set a okay. in other words we can write which implies a intersection neighborhood of point P neighborhood of point P is equal to n finite set n finite set. In other words, we can also write it as A intersection neighborhood of P minus P. This is proper definition of limit point is non empty which implies every neighborhood of point P contains infinite points of set A. We have chosen an arbitrary no neighborhood. So, every neighborhood is uh, every neighborhood contains infinite points of set A which implies P is P is limit point limit point of A. So, we can write that which implies every infinite bounded set has a limit point. Every infinite bounded set has a limit point, has at least one limit point, at least one limit point. So, this complete the proof of this theorem. Thank you very much for watching this video lecture. If you like this video lecture, please 
डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब माई YouTube चैनल थैंक यू वेरी मच